Hi all, we're going to look now at John Ems versus David Hell in round 6 of the Jack Spiegel Memorial. So John Ems playing white, he played e4, Hal replied with e5, and after knight f3, knight c6, Hal for the second time in this tournament had to face bishop c4 instead of bishop b5. He plays knight f6, inviting the fried liver attack, which is knight g5, d5 and stuff. But actually John Ems just played the quiet move d3. So now h6 was played, so that prevents knight g5 or bishop g5. And white castled. Here David Hull supported his e pawn by playing d6. And it looks at this stage as if he's going to move his bishop to e7, perhaps. But this is not what occurred. After c3, he actually played g6. And we've got some undertones now of a sort of king's engine strategy. So the bishop's coming to g7, and later black might, might play for f5, as we'll see. But in this position, um, unlike the king's engine defence, white would have to um, make arrangements for a later c4 and c5. they have to move this stuff out of the way. So if black can secure the e5 point and play it like King's Engine, it will actually be a, a much better version. He plays knight d7, so he's overprotecting this e5 central square. After bishop e3, he plays bishop g7. And after queen c1 now, which seems to be quite an awkward looking move, he just plays queen e7. So this is nice, because he's not worried about knight c3s to d5s. This, this pawn guarantees the queen's not going to be harassed for a while. Rook e1 was played, and now the knight comes back to f6. Bishop d5 was now played, so white's encouraging black to play knight takes d5, but there would be too much pressure on the e-file. Instead, black just retreats the knight back to b8. So he's playing now c6, so he's unblockaded that c-pawn. So he's going to evict that bishop. Knight a3, though, was played. And now a very interesting move. G5 was played, so it looks a bit anti-positional, um, but it is an aggressive move. M's now played D takes E5, and after D takes Queen C2. So what is his plan here? It looks a bit awkward the way he's um, manoeuvring his pieces. This bishop on D5 and this knight on A3. Knight takes D5 was played now, and after E takes Black castled. So black has the two bishops. The knight on a3 now reroutes to the centre a bit with knight c4. And now Hal blocks in his own bishop just for a moment with f6. So it looks a bit silly to have this bishop immolated at the moment by its own pawns. But as, as long as black can play f5 later, it's going to be fine. Rook ad1 was played. And now queen f7. So creating a virtual pin on the d-pawn. The knight would have to be supported, which ends now he plays queen b3 supporting that knight. So d6 might be um, more of a threat. Black, though, now plays b6. So he might still be answering d6 with bishop a6 now, or bishop e6. But the other thing about b6 is bishop b7 could be useful. Knight d7 to c5 could be useful. So it's an all-purpose move here. Let's have a quick look, actually, if d6... There's a new variation. Bishop e6 is actually quite good here, according to Ribka. At least equal, or, or better for black, after knight fd2, f5. So d6 at the moment is being discouraged. Bishop c1 was played. And now Hal plays knight d7, because why not? This bishop coming to c1 means that knight c5 will be more tempting. Maybe... Ems's idea was, you know, to discourage f5 and f4 by, by black. Queen c2, so preempting knight c5. Now bishop b7 was played. So this pawn's a bit of a target now. White really wants to support it with c4, but first he has to move this knight out of the way. So he moves it to knight, knight to e3. But it gives black the opportunity now to liberate this bishop on g7. How plays f5. So white uses the opportunity to protect that uh, d5 pawn with c4. Now, a very interesting decision here. Black doesn't really want to play e4 immediately, I believe, because of knight d4. 
and this knight's quite um, annoying, especially you know it's immediately targeting f5. It can come into e6. So how first plays c5 here, encouraging this en passant and white having some token control of the d file, some token pressure. It's it's a bit harmless this pressure because after rook d6, it's only a one move threat. Just rook a c8, and you know white's lost that central pawn and that hook on the e6 square. And also black can still start improving the pieces now with this knight c5 maneuver to e4. And this is a great prelude now to this avalanche of pawns now coming down to, to attack white's king. As we'll see, it starts with f4. And after knight g4, white's been pushed back. Queen e6, h3, and now h5. How is not afraid just to use these pawns as battering rams for the white king. Knight h2 and now g4. So it's a, like an accelerated king's engine defence, with black having no structural weaknesses on the queen side to attack, no exploitable weaknesses at all, it would seem. And after knight e1, he just plays queen f5 now, so he's threatening all sorts of nasties like g3. He plays g3, in fact, now. After fg, knight takes g3. Ribka gives this as a massive advantage to black. These pawns are still very dangerously mobile, and this bishop is also very, very useful on that on that diagonal. Queen g4 was played, a rather desperate move, just trying to get the queens off, but black continues just with e4. So these bishops are pretty fantastic. These centre pawns are really great as well. This knight's really great. All of black's pieces are really good here. White played um, rook d6. Just trying to invade in, in, in where he can, but now Queen C5 was played, and this is very very dangerous because if um, King H1, well that's illegal, so there's no King H1, there's no King F1, so White was forced to interpose a Rook here. So Rook 1D4 was played. But um, this pin on the bishop was easy to do something about. Black just played knight e2 check now, just winning material, winning the exchange. Queen takes e2, and now bishop takes d4. So black's now material ahead. Two exchanges, in fact, now, after rook takes. So he has two ex exchanges ahead. And after queen g7, bishop b2, white actually resigned after playing this move. It is fairly hopeless. Black can simply continue with a move like um, Queen G5. Ribka thinks is, is quite good. Queen G5. So there's a horrible threat of F3. There's really no defence here. So that was quite a crushing defeat of John M's. Let's have a quick overview and summary. It started off with a seemingly very quiet variation from White. This D3. And now Black played this H6. So preventing knight g5 moves, or bishop g5s. And now after d6, c3, Hal played it like a, a very nice king's engine defence, but first overprotecting the e5 pawn, encouraging white perhaps to try and, you know, to play d5, but white never did play d5. But on the other hand, it wasn't a big deal that white never played that. And instead, you know, after this knight retreat, white um, eventually was encouraged to play d takes e5. Maybe, you know, there's also some ideas here of knight h5 to f4. So white wanted to do something with the centre. After this um, sequence, though, black had the two bishops. It was at this position, though, that I had um, I'd strolled by this board and thought um, black looked a little bit passive here with a kind of sad bishop. But if white can't really stop black in the future playing f5, this is only a temporary... Um, a visual problem that this bishop's trapped by its own pawns. And um, so, in fact, this bishop c1 was, was pre just preempting this f5, you know, f4 business, you know, because knight d7 was coming, and then f5. So, um, after knight d7, queen c2, and, th and this sequence, you know, the black pawns start marching forward. And I think this was a very nice move, this c5. So, you know, black was extending the power of this bishop as well on b7. This diagonal's opened up, and white's pressure on the d-fold is, is harmless. 
getting the knight to e4 as a prelude to the pawn avalanche was very very nice here that knight's very very useful to support this um, demolition of white's king side with uh, this g3 move to really tearing open the open lines against white's king and keeping these these pawns mobile so this check was the final um, devastating blow combined with this temporary decoy of the white queen with this knight e2 check so this combination came from a completely winning position and won both the exchanges two exchanges up so after bishop b2 john ams resigned i hope you enjoyed that game and found it quite instructive i think i did and um, please leave any comments on youtube thanks very much